We still need to look at Netflix despite its reversal because... Hey everybody, in tonight's video we're going to go through 10 stocks to watch for next week. It's going to be some short ideas, long ideas. We're also going to cover the indexes and what transpired today with PPI. Subscribe to this channel because there are updates and alerts that come out periodically and we have the live stream every morning. Coin. This is a short and people are going to look at this and say, I missed it. I don't think you have. One of the most important things for us to focus on is this 22 day moving average that we're just unable to completely get above. We've cracked it and tried, cracked it and tried, but we always wind up rolling right back down. Today they have stated that they want their users to convert to a new coin away from Tether. They're not even charging a fee to do that. The timing to me is completely suspect. You might see a systemic risk that we don't see in the market. I am short this, I have been short for a period of time, just disclosure. When I look at this, I don't see how this is over. I like this as a short before we even had the FTX debacle. Why everybody plays sleuth what we need to do is just understand a couple things. The company in and of itself is going to lose its trading revenue, period. People are done trading. It looked like Robinhood got a ton of volume on crypto trading. For what reason, I don't know, but they did. We understand that the trading revenue is going to drop. We understand that's going to lead to lower prices. We understand assets under management are plummeting, something along the lines of 10% quarter over quarter. Now this could be they're either selling their assets or if they're not selling their assets, they're just losing their assets because people are putting those assets into a wallet. You have a lot of problems here. Now, if we take a look at our level and low right here at 4083, you can see that we've now closed below that. That's we drill this into a weekly, you can see this even clearer. If we want to get super specific, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, neckline. So you're right there setting up to break. The way that you would measure the measured move break, top of the head to the neckline, gets you a 60% drop from where current levels, puts you right around $13, $14. Wouldn't surprise me at all. There's a lot of very large, savvy, short funds out there that are short this. They're looking out months, and this takes months to unravel. Companies can stay solvent much longer than you think. This is Carvania, and one that I would still watch. This is where we started initially shorting it, absolutely corrected. Everyone thought I was brilliant back here, but this stuff takes time. Rallies back up, pulls back, rallies up, curls, everyone thinks it's fine. Up here, no one thinks I know what I'm doing. All of a sudden, we get these two wicks right here, breaks the neckline, perfect little short in there, tries to rally, can't, $5, and everybody right now is saying that it's going to zero. You don't really wanna be shorting into this. You wanna be shorting when it curls up and then rolls back over. You should be looking at CVNA. This probably does wind up worthless. Uh, Bank America had a really good research report on this as to why it probably does wind up with zero equity. Energy, you can see how we had a left shoulder, head, right shoulder, neckline break, roll. This is the 10 crossing the 22 right there. As soon as we touch that 22, we got our short-term sell signal. Starts breaking down, bear flag. Beautiful entry the other day on this, just based upon that Keystone pipeline, like that was gonna solve all the problems. And then you just continued to break down today. We had this negative divergence on the RSI. We've been covering this for weeks, if you get the newsletter. There is a link to the description below to get the newsletter. Also, if you're interested in joining the trading community, there's a link up here in the top right. Simply click that link, you'll be added to the wait list and you are also added to the newsletter at the same time. Energy, rolling. There's your 200 day. There's your 55 that just sliced. This can go a lot lower. There's absolutely no reason that you're not testing this 200 day moving average. ERY is popping over our 55 for the first time since it cracked. If I can leave you with one quick pro tip, if you flip a level for the first time and it goes the first time, that is the most powerful move of all the moves. But ERY is a two bear ETF for energy. And I would strongly suggest that you add this to your list of ideas to watch. The one bright spot in the market has been energy. And that is obviously coming home to roost. If you're like myself and don't mind shorting stocks, you can see how this is mimicking exactly what the XLE is doing. Exxon's a great vehicle to just short the entire space as it's one of the super majors with the most gas stations in the US after Shell. And you can just see the levels pretty clearly in here. But this is also a great vehicle to use. 
Netflix, despite the reversal that we had in the market in the stock today, I think it's pertinent that we still keep it on our radar. We see Wells Fargo coming out and putting a $400 target price on it. That's pretty pivotal. And more or less today's move was based upon the PPI. You have this trend line right here and caveat, I actually bought this today and I'm still in it for a long-term position. I will see how this acts on Monday. Could you gap fill and come all the way down? Sure. You could wait, you could see if that happens. You didn't break that channel line. Now you didn't fill the wedge gap. With a $400 target price, you need to keep this on your radar. Look at my moving averages. I've got a golden cross. My 50 cro is crossing my 200. I'm not overbought. I'm making higher highs on my RSI. Everything on this is perfect. It's just where we are placement with the market right now. I would keep this on my radar and I think it's a great vehicle for next week, depending upon what obviously happens with the Fed and what happens with quad witching and what happens with CPI. Now, the great thing about days like today, despite the fact that they feel brutal when it happens, is it gives us a clear indication on what's going on out there. Today, we had a great day on Apple back through this channel line right here and then rejection. After all is said and done, we have rejection, rejection, rejection of the trend line. So you had a battle in here today. And during this battle, this is what happened. We break, we rally, we pull back. This was some pretty serious selling at the end of the day. Look at how the RSI rolls over. Look at how the selling accelerated into the close. We don't know how this plays out. And that's the beauty of this doji. This doji will tell us which way we're gonna go. If you flip that doji, I'd be shocked if you don't try to get through this DTL again, which could be another four or five points that way. And if you break this one based upon the length of this doji, you're most likely gonna break through here and probably roll back down. We're gonna to have to take a look at this and keep it on our radar. SI Silvergate, I've been on both sides of this trade and quite frankly, the one that's working is the short side. Right in this level, we had the CEO or founder of Block One by 16% of the stock. When that transpired, I thought that was a great idea. He must know more than I know for sure, right? Apparently not because from this level from 29 on to 21, and there are some pretty savvy short sellers that are involved in this. I'm just curious, do they know more than the person that just put $100 million into the company? So I find it fascinating, but price is price and I will trade what's in front of me. So we want to watch this level and we want to watch this really closely and just see how we act in here. This is the weekly. You start cracking these new levels, there's nothing but air below. You're looking at $12, $13. You're looking at getting in here somewhere. $15. And that's if there's not a problem. So this can get substantially worse. I see others out there that looked great and they looked like gangbusters today. Like we were going to rally and we were going to have a great day only to be rejected. SOXL is a great example of that. I really like it. But right now I'm respecting that 22 week moving average. That means that I need to sit, watch and wait. NVIDIA, this is perfect. This was absolutely perfect today. Right to the 200 day moving average and then just complete and utter rejection. I'm not so sure that we're gonna reject there. I'm not sure it's gonna be that easy. This is still my radar. I like these higher lows. Based upon the PPI data today, it could not have gotten any worse. And we're gonna cover that, so make sure you stay to the end. We went up on that data only to roll later in the day but that respect line and the way that you respected it, you need to pay attention to that. I've been saying for some time about the SPY, this is just too easy. This is just, it just keeps rejecting the 200 day. This is too easy. It can be easy, but it's right there. We thought we had the potential to break through this, but it turns out that we cracked and we're below the 200 day. Here's the five that we've now below all week. We're below the five day moving average for the first time in months that you've spent a whole week below that moving average. So you kind of have to go and take a look at what, what was the last time we were under for five days and then how did that play out? Not too well. And now you're up in this range again. So we have to watch this and we have to watch this really carefully. Roll the 10 in there and you have a 510 cross. We don't like 510 crosses because they are short-term sell signals. You put the 22 in there and you can see that the 22 we closed below. The reason for this is because PPI was just absolutely 
awful. To come back down and test 380 would not surprise me. But there are some similarities to things that have happened in the past, and that doesn't mean what's gonna happen in the future, but we should pay attention to it. This is the S&P 500 from the pandemic of 2020 all the way to date to 2023. We can see the huge rise as the Fed injects money into the market. You could see the attempts to rally. This trend line has been respected since 2022. This is the 50 week EMA. You can see how try to get above rejection down, down, down. Today's PPI data was supposed to be a sigh of relief, but it was anything but. We need to take a look at the fact that maybe there are more rate hikes coming and what could that possibly do to the market? Past performance is no guarantee of what's gonna happen in the future, but it's the best that we have. So we have this in a line form and then we wanna see if we can compare this with any other times in history. And then that could possibly give us an understanding of what we might be in store for does not mean it's going to happen, but it gives us an understanding of what has happened in the past and what might happen in the future. The last time we had readings like this was 2006, 2007, 2008. If we take that period in time and by readings like this, I mean technical indicators that show that the market structure itself is extremely weak. And we're seeing that with the 50 EMA weekly, the way that we're crossing down. It's been a long time since we've had something like that. It's been years. If you go and take a look, this is 2006 and 2008. And if you take this and you just lay it in here, you can see this pretty clean. You can see how we rallied up. Now, some people are gonna say, okay, well, this should be over here a little bit more. That very well could be the case. This could be us rising up like we did in 2006, 2007, forms a little top. It's not gonna be exact. And then you see how you came down, rallied, tried, failed, tried to rally again, and then ultimately you failed. I don't know if what's gonna happen is going to be similar to what happened in 2006, 2007, 2008. I will say that it is becoming eerily similar. And the larger problem that I see is what we're being told about the underlying inflation issue is just simply not accurate. They are consistently coming out with numbers that are higher than we are expecting. Case in point today, 8.30, month over month, the estimate was 0.2, came in at 0.3. PPI is what the cost is for a business to buy a product in order to then make the product and sell it to the consumer. So this gets trickled down to the consumer. You can see that this was where we were previously. This is where the estimate was. This is what came in. Year over year upticked. We were looking for a steep drop. We went up 8.1%, but nonetheless, we're still higher than what they think is going to happen. This is really an issue. Core PPI, 0.1 previously, we were looking for 0.2, we came in at 0.4. Core PPI year over year, 6.8, we were looking for 5.9, came in at 6.2. The fact that core PPI month over month doubled is an issue. For those that are not aware, core PPI measures what the change in selling price of goods and services to producers but it takes out the food and energy where full PPI has food and energy in. And that's what made this so damaging today. Make sure you are watching the VIX. Downward trend line breaks, goes over and over again, right at this level. Why is this important for me to bring up? Because it's rare that you're going to rally up to this level and then roll. How rare is it? It hasn't happened. I can have all the plans in the world, but the economic data is what's going to drive the market. So when I got to this level and I broke that DTL right there, I went up. When I broke this level, I went up. When you see a pattern, pay attention to that pattern. Any questions, as always, reach out. I'm gonna start doing a video, YouTube video, questions that I get asked. So if you have questions that you would like asked and you would like a video done on them, or you think that the group can benefit, if it's about an economic indicator or a technical indicator, put it in the comments below and I will get to it. You can also email it to me if it's something private that you don't want anyone to know that you're asking about. You can be as specific as you want. I plan on getting very specific with this, but I get a, I get a lot of emails and I would I think that people could benefit from hearing the questions that the other people are asking or situations that other people are running into. That's all I have. Everybody have a great evening. Trade to win.